Previously on the Carbide Camp Knife series, we devised a custom fixture to make work holding our knife blanks a piece of cake. Whether or not the workflow I planned for it works is still to be determined. Our blanks are in place, the Nomad is ready, so let's make some tool pads. In stations 1 and 2, I have two different knife blank models. The first one is my best guess at what came out of the water jet. The standard knife profile plus 1mm of margin at the thickness of my raw stock which is an eighth of an inch. The other in station 2 is the knife blank at its final exact profile but without any of the 3D features and taking into account the fact that it'll be slightly thinner than the original blank which will have been surfaced down to 0.115 inches in thickness in station 1. I plan on clamping these models each at three points to start. Using sketches for containment, I'll pocket finish the faces of my knives where they'll be obscured by hardware at a later step. In station one, I'll also machine the pinholes in the handle that will be used for alignment in station two. I'm doing a boring op with a roughing pass followed by a spring pass where I can tune the stock to lead for maximum accuracy. In station two, I'll also take a moment to sort of pre-profile an area of the blade that will be blocked by work holding later. These tool pads comprise the first set of operations to run. The second set starts by facing the knife blanks everywhere else that hasn't been touched by an end mill yet. In station two, I'll also complete the profiling of the knife blank. Because I left so much extra margin on the blade from the water jet, I'm taking this in three step overs. While I could just do one step over and use a shallower depth of cut, I'd rather use a deeper cut to make greater use of the side of my cutter instead of the bottom that's been abused by all the pocketing done previously. You can think of this as sort of a lazy version of an adaptive toolpath. An option I made sure to tick in Fusion was feed optimization, which will slow your CNC as it approaches sharp corners, which will cause spikes in spindle load and potentially vibration. That's never a good thing. You want to approach these pockets of increased resistance with caution. And it's also important to make sure that your retract height is set higher than that of your clamping hardware, because otherwise this will happen. Now at the conclusion of these two sets of operations, my blade should be 0.11 inches thick, give or take a couple thou. I'll flip my fixture over and secure the profiled knife blanks in stations 3 and 4. The same things happen in each station, just mirrored. Here we're going to rough in and finish our primary bevel and swedge. Using our knife blank model from station 2 as our stock volume and our finished knife model as the target geometry to machine, I'll use an adaptive clear to get within a couple thou of our bevels. To finish the bevels, I chose to use a 3D contour toolpath with step downs of 14 thou or 0.035 millimeters. I made sure to enable feed optimization here because I knew the end mill was going to have a tough time making this left turn. I'm going to spoil things a little for you here and tell you that I couldn't get this toolpath to work as consistently as I'd hoped. I still got chatter in these corners no matter how slowly I approach them and I'll show you an alternate method after you see the issues I ran into. Okay, I think that's enough cam nerd talk for today, let's see this thing run. Only one blank is being machined initially because the operations for Station 2 require that a blank already have been phased in Station 1. Once the first knife is faced, we can start the assembly line and march fresh blanks through Stations 1 and 2. This process wasn't without some faults though. I tried to use a reasonably small step over for profiling the blades in station 2, but there were some cases where feed optimization just wasn't sufficient to stop chatter when profiling the jimping or the choil. The best way around this would be to clear out those areas first using a boring operation referenced off the partial cylindrical faces. A couple extra minutes here would dramatically improve the overall process reliability. But that small hiccup aside, I managed to get all four of my blanks through this step in usable condition. Moving on to stations 3 and 4, I could finally begin beveling. The adaptive rough here is totally fine. I'm using a 332nd inch 4 flute all tin coated end mill with a 5 to 10 thou corner radius. I run each tool pretty hard for 2 to 3 cycles before retiring it. I'm not worried about surface finish with this end mill because I switched to a fresh 8th inch tool with a 30 thou corner radius for finishing. Here I initially thought things were going well, but as soon as I was fully engaged in the corners of the bevel I heard the dreaded rattle of chatter. That left a bunch of deep pitting that I knew was going to be impossible to sand out by hand. For the next few blades I tried progressively increasing the sensitivity of feed optimization to slow down the CNC when entering corners, 
but no matter how much I slowed down or how early I slowed down, the spindle load and reaction forces fluctuated enough to visibly alter the surface finish. After going through all four blades, I pulled out the two worst examples and tried machining a bevel at a shallower angle that went further up the blade to remove a little more material and hopefully mask the chatter marks. That did help, but the cosmetic defects weren't completely erased. Without making more substantial changes to my knife design, I would have to settle with the fact that my blades would never be perfect. If I were to do this again, I think the best way to approach this would probably be to replace the 3D contour operation with a 3D adaptive pass using really fine step downs. That way, the tool will automatically take problematic corners in multiple passes instead of simply slowing down, which in hindsight was the worst possible thing to try. Reducing feed rate will cause your end mill to momentarily become a grinding tool instead of a cutting tool. That friction increases localized heat which can cause surface hardening of the steel that will make machining that region even more difficult. It's a nasty feedback loop of failure if your gut instinct is to reduce feed rate when you hear something go wrong. Adaptive is the better option here, just make sure you tighten your tolerances to something more befitting of a finishing toolpath instead of a roughing toolpath. Running the beveling toolpaths for stations 3 and 4 takes between 2-4 to four hours per cycle depending on your desired step down with a tool change in the middle. Though it's not a fast process by any means, it allowed me to shape my knives in a way I never would have been able to do by hand without a boatload of practice. With a relatively simple blade profile like this, a bevel grinding jig might actually have let me get very close to these results, but something more complex would require freehand grinding which I'm just not cut out for. Plus, it wouldn't have been as easy to nail an identical 20 thou edge thickness every time like on the CNC. Having that consistency of edge thickness is important going into heat treat. Go too thin and you risk having cracks form at the edge, though O1 tool steel is a little more forgiving in this regard. Leave the edge too thick, and you're going to have to spend more time finishing your blade and sharpening it. This is what a CNC is good for, doing the exact same thing over and over again, which makes it such a powerful tool, even at such a small scale like with the Nomad. Is this something I would recommend to every knife maker? Probably not. Sometimes manual processes can be faster or give you the flexibility to make one-off pieces without sinking all this time into making fixtures and tool pads. But for a knife noob like me, CNC has been a game changer, and I can't wait to see how many new doors it unlocks for me in the future. Next time on the Carbide Camp Knife series, I'll show you how I made this really simple sanding block and finished my knives. <laughs>